Hello everyone, welcome back on the channel. My name is Stefan and this is the French Cooking Academy. So I'm hearing that autumn is creeping up in America and it's getting colder. And I thought it was the perfect time to start talking about soups. And as you can see, I've got plenty of vegetables, plenty of pieces of meat and a big pot. So we are on to something quite special. But before we can start, we need to know where did it all started, this soup story. And that is the recipe of the day. It's called the pot au feu. And apparently that recipe was the mother recipe of all soups. All the recipe techniques and demonstration coming up. Wow, soups, it's a big history and the pot au feu is the ancestor of all that. So we're gonna try to condense everything. First, let's start with the name. Pot au feu in French means pot and feu means fire, which means pot on the fire. That term comes from the Middle Ages where at the time there was no stove and the peasants were basically using this as a stove, a fire with a pot with water into it. And that would be it. It would be always on and you would take vegetables, pieces of meat and they would cook their stuff with the pot on the fire called the pot au feu. Uh, and they will serve this basically with a piece of bread, some of the broth on there and some really low quality pieces of meat and it was a peasant kind of dish. Uh, later on, uh, Henry IV, I think in the 16th century or something like that, uh, once came up with the famous thing saying, I want all the peasants in my realm to be able to afford on Sunday to have a chicken in their pot. And it was the first time where there was an attempt to give a name of that way of using this. It was called the pot. And further down the line, century went by again. It's only in the 1800 that really people started to realize that the fact of cooking these meats and vegetables, you could really separate the meat and the vegetable and the broth to create what we know today as the soup. So there was all this soup with the past vegetables and it was on the other side, the ancestor of the consommé, which was the bouillon. In Paris in the 1800, there was actually people selling bouillon in little carts and telling you that if you were drinking this, it will heal your cold, it will restore your health and were all these medicinal properties to the point that people really liked it. They settled down out of their car, they opened a little uh, shop to sell the bouillon. And they were called the restaurateur, the people that restore health. And this is the ancestry of the name restaurant that we have today. So it's quite interesting. Now, back to today, of course, why do we have that dish still called the pot au feu? It went 360 and when the stove disappeared, like the ancient stove with the fire, we have the stove of today. Well, if you want to recreate that recipe, you had to make it a whole dish. So people started to take a pot, nice pieces of meat, nuts, vegetables, cook everything just the right amount of time and start to serve the meat on one side with the vegetables, with some condiment, which is called the pot au feu. And this is what we're gonna see today. When you separate the broth, you will have the consommé, something we're gonna see on another video. But today, let's start with the pot au feu. Let's cook. And now let's start to revive that recipe, the pot au feu. So remember back in the days, the bouillon, un bouillon de bœuf is called the beef broth. And uh, there was not many vegetables used before because it was all centered around getting that flavor of the beef into water and to make that broth. Today, of course, the pot au feu is a meal. This meal will accommodate four people uh, and it uses the meats as well as some vegetables that we're going to be serving on the table. And so there's more vegetables than back in the days. So we've got carrots and turnips, potatoes and leeks. And we're not going to do the food prep as usual as peeling these because it's a long cooking process. We're going to wait a bit before uh, we start peeling those things. That's a bit of an exception today. On the right hand side, these are just the one uh, vegetable used for the aromatics that's going to be giving some flavor to the beef. So not many, huh? parsnip, carrot, celery, turnip, onions, and uh, leek again, plenty of salt, uh, peppercorn, black peppercorn, and some cloves. For the beef, very important, use different styles of cuts of meat, not all the same. You want to vary the flavors. Huh? I've got some ribs here, oyster blade, some shoulder, some shank, and we're going to need also some beef bones. And now let's start the recipe with a good news, huh? is that uh, this recipe is actually extremely simple. Uh, and it's kind of uh, almost like a one pot recipe, so nothing difficult. You go straight to the stove and you already may wonder uh, what happened to the stock pot I had in the presentation at the beginning of the video. Uh, just to show you uh, that, you know, first of there's different types of pots. Remember, pot au feu is any pot that you can use. 
Uh, it's called a Russe in French, uh, and I love that pun actually, but it's only for big, uh, big amounts. So we're going to be starting here with uh, the bones. It says that you have to put first the bones, uh, a layer of bones, this one is a, it's a bit big there. And we're going to surround this with all the pieces of meat. Look, look how easy <laughs> that thing is. So I'm not cutting any of the meat, uh, I'm leaving everything in one bit, like in one piece, sorry. And we're gonna try to have everything on there. And if it's too big, no worries, you can put this on top like that. That's the first step. Once your meat and your bones are in, uh, in your stock pot, uh, we're gonna be already pouring cold water over the meat. And uh, for an interesting twist today, I'd like to let you know that we're using a different technique uh, that is not the technique from the culinary schools. And that is a technique I'm using from an old book from the 1900s uh, that has the recipe of the pot au feu and that do not use the blanching of the bones or anything like that and is using a different type of technique in how you distribute the water. So very interesting. That recipe is based on four liters uh, of water. Uh, I don't know, in cups that might be like uh, maybe uh, eight cups or something more in gallons. But you start off with just three liters of cold water to start with. Huh? So I'm going to add first three liters of water to cover my meat. My water is now in and immediately I'm going to turn my heat on high and we're going to bring this meat here, or the water, sorry, to the boil and I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen then when it boils. All right, so look at this. The boils arrive and look how dirty that thing is. That's right, you know, because usually the technique uh, we use in the culinary school type, you have to kind of blanch things and then discard the water and then start again and to remove all of these kind of big impurities. However, this technique uh, is interesting because they are saying that you should not discard the water. Like some of you have been pointing out before when I was doing some chicken stock, I've been asking and questioning, why are we discarding the water to put it back? Because you're going to lose some taste. That's right. And interestingly enough today, the technique uh, that cook uh, Jules Gouffre is using, he say you start with three liters of water, which is by the way, guys, uh, I made a mistake. It's uh, 12 cups or 0.8 gallons. And you do a first boil, like I'm doing here. And you clean your pan or your broth as much as you can, yeah? while keeping all of the taste inside. Okay? Once you're here, you start to add another bit of water, so this is 300 ml, but one, uh, one cup or a bit more of cold water that usually immediately kind of reduce the boiling here and we have to bring this to the boil a second time that's going to bring more impurities to the bottom and we have to repeat apparently the process for three times. It's a kind of a blanching process with the meat in the pot. Extremely interesting. So we're going to try that. So three times you have to do this. Huh? You start with three liters, bring to the boil, clean. Then you add 300 ml of water, bring to the boil, clean again, and repeat that process for three times in a row until you get a total of one gallon of water. And that broth here should be totally clean. And mission accomplished, the cleaning has been done, and to be honest, not bad. Look at this technique. Jules Gouffre, this uh, pot of a specialist, uh, you should be proud, I think it's a pretty good result. I mean, you know, there is some little white bits here, but that's just little foam, and the rest is pretty clean. The meat, look at the meat. Nice and clean, there's no like impurities or anything like that. So it says from here, uh, it is time to add your aromatics. So use what's in the video description, what I've listed for the aromatics, just little chunks. So we have the carrot, some celery, a piece of parsnip, a whole onion with the cloves on it, very important. And then the big turnip. I'm going to put it in there. All right. 
And as he mentioned, once you put the vegetable in, it will kind of, you know, alter the boiling a little bit. And you have to bring it vigorously to the boil one last time, do a final clean. And when that's done, we're going to put it on a simmer with a lid on, but I'll show you that in a bit. The boil is back immediately. I'm going to turn my big heat off. Uh, we can do here, as always, uh, with a, a spoon or anything you want. You do that final clean. That is a continuous process. So always try to clean, clean the top here. And from what Jill Goof is saying, from here, we put a lid on, but not closed. It needs to have what he says about two fingers in size, uh, you know, opening. So maybe some kind of, I'll put some kind of like that. Maybe you can put a spoon under or something like this. And I'm going to put this on the back of my stove on a simmer. So you still want to see that boiling, the bubbles coming on top. And it doesn't have to be flat like that. You want some little boiling. It's very simmering, just, uh, just above simmering. So you have that kind of boiling movement. And that has to cook now for about three hours. Now a bit more than an hour uh, in, it is time to already remove uh, and discard the vegetables that are already way cooked. And from what Jules Gouffre is saying, which is the cook eh, the, that I use the recipe from, he says that the vegetables, if you leave them too long, they will start to actually absorb some of the nutrients and taste from the bouillon. And this is not what you want. Eh? So you just want to uh, put the vegetables to add some flavor, not to take the flavor away. And now we're going to just continue the cooking on the same level of heat, slowly, with just the meat, eh? the pieces of meat. Look at that. It's nice to start to detach, but give it another hour or a bit more, one and a half hour or so. After two and a half hours, I've just uh, checked my meat. And you know what? It hasn't been three hours, but it is already uh, cooked from what I can see. Uh, so look at this. You see how it starts to fall apart? Uh, so this is very important not to overcook the meat. So sometimes three hours is the time, but depending, this was quite thin. And as you can see here, mm, it's cooked. So when that happened, if it's cooked before the, uh, the time, I've just turned my heat off. I'm going to leave this to rest. And now we're going to immediately start to cook the vegetables that we're going to serve on the plate. But in your case, if you don't serve your dish right away, you can wait. I really advise to just prepare these side vegetables when you are ready to kind of serve to your guests and stuff so they're nice, freshly made. And I'm going to show you how to cook them now. You always start to cook the vegetables that take the longest. So here we need to serve uh, boiled potatoes and we've got leeks, carrots and turnips. So we start with the potatoes, always start in cold water, little bit of rock salt, put the heat on high, and we wait for this to start to boil. When the boil starts, you count around 20 minutes until the potatoes are cooked, and you always check them with a knife. If the knife goes in easily, it means they are ready. After you started your potatoes, we can also start by cooking the carrots. So I've cut my I've uh, peeled and cut my vegetables and I'm going to put the hard vegetables at the bottom here. I'm going to put a multi-layer and to cook the carrots, I'm going to borrow some of that beautiful bouillon that we have uh, from our meat. Uh, not everything, but I'm going to add yeah, a nice amount of that bouillon in here mixed with some water to get some of this nice flavoring. I'm going to top up now with a little bit of water and same thing like the potatoes, carrots are pretty tough to cook. I'm going to bring this to the boil and start cooking everything. And then halfway through, I'm going to start to add my leeks and some of my turnips that actually didn't look very good, but I'm still going to try to use them. When you're about 10 minutes in and the carrots are boiling, I'm going to add some turnips in there as well as my pieces of leeks. And I'm going to top the whole thing up with a bit more water. There we go. And wait until this is cooked. So that's another 10-15 minutes. And that's it guys. We're reaching the end of our pot au feu making. So this is all the elements of the pot au feu. At its core, the pot au feu is just boiled vegetables 
with the boiled meat and there you have some broth. I've got the bones here that have been discarded on the side and all the juice from my, uh, the cooking my vegetables, I put this back into the bouillon and this is how it's called, and the bouillon de beef or uh, bouillon de boeuf as we call it in France. Now usually when it's ready, you serve the vegetables on a tray with the meat and you start eating. You don't care about taking care of the, the bouillon filtering right now. Because I'm on the video, I have to tell you now what's going to happen because after that we need to do the plating. So usually once you're done eating, all the pieces of meat have been discarded. You're going to filter this with a fine mesh sieve into a clean container or big saucepan, more manageable in size, and let it cool down totally before freezing it for further use. And this is what I'm going to do uh, to freeze this and use it next week to make the base of our consommé. Huh? So that's for the broth or the bouillon. All the leftover meats on the bone, you can scrap it out. All the pieces of meat, you can freeze them as well. And the best use is maybe for a shepherd's pie, that's an idea, but you can use it for plenty of recipes. The leftover vegetables from the aromatics can also be reused into a soup. You can use some of that broth, mix them, and maybe tonight or tomorrow you can make a vegetable soup of your own. So don't think like I'm wasting all this thing because like I say to everyone, you know, there's things happening outside of the video that you don't see, but just to give you an idea. So now I'm just going to show you how I played this uh, my way. Uh, basically, the pot au feu, how do you serve this? Uh, it's an old ancient recipe where in 2018, so as you can see here, I've set up, of course, the bread. Uh, you need this, uh, so before it was served like this. I've got the bowl like a soup and I'm starting here with a piece of meat at the bottom. The one condiment that is always served uh, with the, the pot au feu is uh, gherkins and mustard. I, on the other hand, like to have even an extra uh, bit of mayonnaise. And I'm going to show you how uh, my idea in my head was how we should uh, kind of serve the pot au feu. So I've got here, like I've seen this in restaurants, you see the little jar? That's some boiling broth that I had. And I'm going to start with a little layer of the broth. Next, I'm going to go on and grab some of these veg. Then I'm going to add some more meat, yeah, because of course we have to be indulgent. And I'm taking the different cuts, you see, see how they look different? This is more like stiff and, and a standard uh, type. Now look at this one, look at that. I'm going to put this one here, mm, look at these shapes there. That's beautiful. So when we're here, I'm going to just add a little bit more of that hot broth. Uh, remember so some kind of a soup and we're gonna do the you know the things it's it's meant to be done usually so you have some uh, gherkins and you can also decorate it people like to do this also with a little bit of parsley so that's how you know the kind of the indulgent modern pot of feu would be uh, but how do we actually eat it you see there's a, a mountains of things uh, usually a fork and even a spoon is enough to kind of go through and try the veg and even the meat should be cooked enough so you can just detach it and eat it with condiment. I personally like to mix it with for instance a bit of gherkin, a bit of mayo and a bit of parsley. But the taste of the broth, let me have a taste of that broth here, oh, sorry gherkin. Mm. It's actually quite salty, but it goes, you know what, very nice with all the other elements. It really elevates everything, all this flavor. And I think I've kind of overdone that little pot of a bowl here, but <laughs> it's just to show you uh, the idea of my pot of a... But that's it really, guys. At the core, it's not something special. It's boiled beef with a broth and that you can separate and some boiled vegetables. It's an ancient dish. But the most important in that is really this bouillon that we're going to be using next week uh, to create our first really ever uh, kind of soup which is the consommé and that completes the recipe uh, of the week i hope you enjoyed it this was a bit uh, maybe a bit difficult a bit long but in any case i'll see you all next time for some more cooking video take care all bye bye